software engineer in Google Cloud, specifically on Chrome Enterprise, and that's what we're going to be discussing today. And uh, we're here really to talk about you know, the value of moving your workforce, your frontline workers, to the cloud, right, and what that means, um, not only for your business, but productivity as well. Um, I'm going to start off with a little, you know, one minute little intro video, so let me go back here and get auto-played. This is where it happens, with a smile, a skillful touch, a thoughtful look, the morning rush, an evening stroll, out in the cold but always warm, we are the front line, hear us, see how we work together. With Chromebooks in our hands, we'll be faster, more connected, and better informed. We'll keep going the distance. And we'll always have your back. Because we are the front line. introduction to the frontline worker. Um, and again, just to introduce myself, I'm Jeff Chigoda. I've been in IT for about 20 years. Uh, worked in government industry, healthcare, uh, financial services, retail, a lot of different industries, specifically in areas of compliance, architecture, um, and really digital transformations, both on the customer facing side and on the workforce side. And um, I'm here today to tell you about Chrome Enterprise and how it can help transform your business, specifically for your frontline workforce. Um, your frontline workforce, right, um, is typically the folks that are, you know, connected to your customers or interfacing with your customers every day. Um, and it's fair to say, like, in our personal lives, especially the younger generations, and I look a lot younger than I am, but I'm actually almost 40 years old, um, <laughs> that, you know, when I started in IT, right, everything was in-house. We all worked at a desk. We all had traditional PCs deployed. And that environment is drastically changing. Customers I've met through Google or my own customers, um, especially the new generations coming up in the workforce, they are used to being connected like they're used to being connected on their smartphone with cloud applications. And I always give the example, why can't we just share the file? Um, and then it doesn't sometimes work that way, right, in the enterprise. Um, so, you know, our experience with cloud applications is pretty simple and intuitive, right? I think that's why, you know, smartphones are so popular and the applications in smartphones. Um, it's kind of that instant access to data, simplicity, ease of use. And you know, I think as we shift in technology from the home um, and how it impacts our work, we do typically see a great differentiation between like that type of cloud, you know, a, a worker and a cloud worker. So a, a traditional worker, I think, is kind of stuck on traditional legacy applications in our environment, on traditional hardware. And really, the shift to a cloud worker, mobile-enabled worker, um, really can change the way that productivity works, where they're using their devices from any location, um, and accessing business uh, resources, right, and the, the means that they want to access them. And it's really about, again, speed, convenience, and, you know, really the fundamental ways that, that generations want to work nowadays. Um, so while we often think of certain roles um, that may be more cloud-enabled, than others, the fact is that every worker in their environment can be cloud enabled, right? It, it does take work to get there. Um, but really, the, the value of our frontline worker, um, whether it's uh, developers, machinists, um, you know, call centers, remote workers, these are the people that sometimes like are touching our customers, right? In a patient setting. Um, and, and they are the face of the business, right? And they're the folks that we need to empower that technology doesn't encumber them. And so again, particularly the frontline worker use case, and when we're going to use this word use case, and use it at Google a lot about you know, how we can carve out certain areas of our business um, of those use cases, of our workers, right, of certain segments to enable them um, in the cloud um, and really get that productivity um, that we're all used to, I think, with cloud applications on our smartphones and things of that nature. <coughs> So again, the frontline worker, and it's a very broad term, does make up a massive amount of our workforce. Um, 
you know, whether it's cashier, customer service representatives, healthcare providers, construction teams, um, these are the folks out in the field working day to day. Sometimes they're distributed, sometimes they're central, uh, and they're the they're the essentially the voice of the customer. They're the ones interfacing with the customer many times. Um, the deskless worker is more and more making up 80% of the global workforce. Uh, essentially, I'm a deskless worker. Um, I just work wherever my computer is. I think more and more generations coming up, and even uh, generations in the workforce are kind of expecting that out of our employers nowadays. Um, and again, sometimes for all my workers, and I think we all have this, it's sometimes I call it the mundane or the routine things that we do day in and day out. I, I sometimes use the call center as a perfect example. Right? They're in maybe two or three application sets, interfacing with customers, getting information or transacting data um, back and forth between the customer and the customer service representative. Um, and, and simply put, like these types of workers are the backbone of our workforce. And if customers don't have a great customer experience, they don't tend to go back to that. Particular business provider. Um, so, I'm a bit here. so um, frontline workers are again often the, the, the face of the company. Um, they impact our customer experience through providing services or products to a customer. Gartner found that 89% of companies expect to compete primarily on the basis of their customer service experience. Um, I think the word customer success comes to mind. I think that's a, a new trend and a new word we hear within our organization. That, that that customer success is critical to I think every business, no matter what you're in, healthcare, retail, um, you know, the list goes on. So um, whether it's transaction-based businesses, which I think a lot of it is, it's traditional routine transactions that we're transacting over and over, um, that customers who have the best experience tend to spend 100%, or I'm sorry, 140% more compared to those that have the poorest experience. Um, and I think that's very true. I, I think whether it's a retail environment, healthcare, Everything we do in our personal lives, our telecommunications, and our phone, and our, and our television, and all of those, if you don't have a great customer experience, you tend to keep it moving and, and move on. And so those frontline workers um, really have a really a large impact on our business that we tend not to, I think when we, we're sitting in certain chairs, we tend to overlook or deprioritize how important those individuals are in the business, um, and making them productive is really like a huge potentially untapped resource in our business. Um, so, and again, according to surveys, um, this was only 12% of respondents thought that an organization invested sufficiently in developing their frontline worker managers. Um, and these are the folks, right, that would be interfacing with the uh, associates that are interfacing with our customers. So it, it, it's, I think, it's a trend, and I think maybe it's just from legacy environments with all of, hey, that's how it's always worked, and that's the application we've always used, and that's the way we've always done it. Um, companies aren't really taking a shift at how that could impact their business or really improve their customers' uh, lives. So again, it's, I would say, lack of investment on both uh, the day-to-day -day managing those jobs and also the disconnect of how they feel as a corporate citizen within their own environment. Um, and again, according to the survey, the non-desk workers at 75% said that they aren't telling um, them enough about the changes in policies and goals that are happening within their own organization that may impact them. So um, my previous employer, we had a very large call center, and the call center was essentially the face of the company. And, uh, and sometimes, it, you know, you think it's an hourly worker, and you, you tend not to, at a certain level, um, hey, they're able to do their job on their current device or the way they're deployed. Um, but it does impact the way that they're able to serve their customers. So according to our own survey, um, and I thought this chart was pretty interesting, uh, about the changes that we believe that are happening with our own organization. So we're down here at, you know, information worker is someone that's really producing information for the company that's going to be building processes in the way that, like, our frontline worker should work. And they feel that they are having changes in technology. But then our frontline workers that are more that routine, day-to-day, -day, do not feel they're having a change within technology in their organizations. And a lot of this then can lead to, um, you know, stress of the employee or dissatisfaction of the technology that they have in order to serve their customers. So, and again, like kind of the end result is disengagement and talent issues. Um, I think we've all seen it in organizations, folks get burnt out, um, that maybe the managers have a more positive outlook on how things are going within the organization, but the frontline workers, you know, don't have that same opinion. And, um, and really, you know, it does impact the organization's ability to move long term. 
and disengagement comes at a high cost. Um, I won't go through all the statistics, but you know, one of my previous, uh, we were a retail employee, and so we did have a lot of turnover in those hourly um, um, positions. So an average employee that's making less than $30,000 a year, um, it costs roughly 16% um, of that employee's salary to replace them or turn them over. Uh, and a lot can come back from technology. I remember when I first joined Google, and I was in my new hire orientation, and I was sitting with other, uh, I'd say, senior IT members, and we're discussing Outlook and kind of traditional IT, and I had younger generations, what's that? Because they've grown up in our educational systems that are either using Google products or Apple products. And so I think when we all sit here and we're like, oh, you can't really do it that way, and it's not really how it works in the enterprise, they're used to, what do you mean I can't share the file? What do you mean it's not an app? And, um, my own workings at Google, I work with some large consulting companies that actually worry about this is, is trying to bring up new workforce into, into their environment that they don't have the right tools and technology to attract them. Um, and, and again, this, this uh, the turnover happens or the disengagement of the employees. So, um, you know, digitally empowered frontline workers um, shouldn't be a luxury, right? They're really a necessity to our organizations and they make us successful in all of our organizations. Um, one of my other previous companies, I did a large customer-facing mobile application that was deployed to roughly two and a half, three million customers. And then our internally from our customer-facing folks, um, whether at the store level or call center level, well, how come we don't have that for us inside the company? And again, I think, you know, as an enterprise, we all tend to focus on the customer and forget about the folks that are actually interfacing um, with those applications and they aren't a cloud-native application that they're using within their organization. So more reliable and flexible technology coupled with information um, not only improves that employee experience, but in turn improves that customer service experience, right? They can more quickly access the information, their laptops a little quicker, um, all those important things. I mean, how many times have we all been on hold when we're like working with a customer service representative at our own company or at another company? Oh, just hold, I'm waiting on my computer. Or hold, I'm waiting for this application to load. Um, but those are seconds lost with customers and poor customer impact. So, um, and 80% of executives in a recent survey agree that empowering frontline workers with tools and platforms um, does have a direct impact on their customer satisfaction and growth, and also worker satisfaction as well. So let's, um, and, and now I get to talk about my favorite part, is about Chrome Enterprise. So like I mentioned is, um, I've been in IT for over 20 years, deploying a lot of traditional IT. I've been at Google a little more than two years. Um, and I just love working with large enterprises like yourself and getting to see the impacts that Chrome and new technology have and how they transform the organization. So um, is everyone here familiar? They heard of Chromebooks or Chrome devices? Anyone's kids using them in school? A couple, okay. Um, I, I find with folks that I work with, um, they may have heard of it from their, from their kids or their kids have them, um, but they ha haven't had any experience in the business. Um, so um, I'm gonna be covering a, a lot of the, the factors on how you can use Chrome Enterprise within your business. So really, I would say the, the power of Chrome Enterprise is it's not a traditional operating system. Um, a lot of the security is all done by design. It's all built into the, uh, into the operating system with a comprehensive AI-driven threat detection system, granular policies that are ever evolving. So they're cloud-managed devices. You don't manage them on-premise. You can, but you, I wouldn't recommend better to have it a cloud native device and you essentially push applications to the device that get them through cloud policy. So gone are the days of software packaging and agents that you need to push to push software out to your computers, um, whether they're in your office or out in a remote worker's deskless desk at home, um, you can manage these devices. They're easy to share and manage. There's over 200 policies that you can manage from the cloud console, both user and device policies. You can essentially do your fleet management, all your updates are all done through the console. Um, and the provisioning time and the boot up times, I think are, is what is most remarkable, I think when most employees get on them. Um, again, I'll give the example of the call center. It's a 24 by seven call center, so shifts rotate, and people have to log into computers or they have to reboot computers. I don't know how fast your PCs boot in your organization, but I would say, you know, what is it, a 10 to 15 minute operation? It's kind of, oh, let's reboot and go get coffee. Chrome, it's a six second reboot. It, it reboots so fast that folks are like, did it do it? Um, and it's similar with updates. Um, that, that folks, and especially in IT, they're like, I, it didn't do it. It's like, no, it did it. It's just, we're not used to that. <laughs> we're, we're used to like, no, no, you know, go take a break. Um, and then finally, we're gonna cover it as well. 
variety of devices with Chrome. Uh, Chrome's been around uh, for over 10 years now. Um, and when it first started, there were just a couple manufacturers and a couple makes and models, but at this point, it's Chromebooks, Chromeboxes, and we're gonna cover that here in a few slides. So again, the device boot time, I think, is what is most remarkable. And again, in, in those hourly type um, worker positions, if you think about it, they waste 15 minutes booting up, they waste time rebooting or doing updates on their computer, they waste time logging in, locking the computers, all those things, if you think about it, an hour employee, they wasted an hour not even doing their job, just dealing with their system. Um, so Chrome devices boot in usually less than six seconds. They're actually one of the only operating systems that gets faster as you use it. Again, updates run in the background. Um, there's no downtime in terms of updating and updating your devices. The uh, cloud-based user profiles means no matter what device they're on, in any location, uh, where they're working, they essentially get their same profile everywhere they are. They don't need to worry about where they are, what device they're on, uh, and all the, all the things that we're used to with traditional PCs. Uh, and let me keep it moving here. There, there's again a, a myriad of applications that I think I'll cover as well um, a little further in. So again, I mentioned that there's a wide variety of devices. Uh, we have our device tree out here uh, for folks that, uh, that want to kind of touch and feel the devices, but essentially every make and you know, manufacturer produces Chrome devices at this point. Uh, they all will have different form factors, different size laptops, different size, we call them Chrome boxes, so that would just kind of be the PC replacement. And the other is called a Chrome base, which I'll kind of compare it to like the Apple iMac, right? It's an all-in-one touch screen, computer all-in-one box as well. Uh, and, and again, we also offer LTE-enabled devices. That was kind of in the video for remote workers, you know? They're already connected to the cloud, they're connected to their apps, so whether they're out in the field or at home, all those connectivity concerns are really um, a, a thing of the past that I think we're all used to having to deal with um, for our remote workers. So, and again, I, I think what the power is, and it is, um, you really have to think differently. I, when I work with uh, system administrators and security professionals, I don't wanna say take all your Windows knowledge and throw it out, but you really have to uh, rethink how Google has done security with your device. So it's a really a holistic approach to security um, by keeping your business safe and your employees' information <coughs> safe. And it's all baked into the device, whether it's a disk encryption, uh, sandboxing, we have all these different techniques that make the device secure, you know, natively secure in itself. Um, and again, both the devices and the Chrome browser are secure by design. They deter uh, users really from um, falling hostage to malware attacks and a lot of the common ransomware and a lot of the threats that we've seen in the landscape that we're buying third-party tools to manage in our organizations. Chrome devices aren't vulnerable to those traditional uh, threats that I think we're used to managing in, in a corporate environment. Uh, and again, the applications, I would say the ecosystem is really wide and, and vast at this point. Uh, so again, it, it is a browser, so anything you run in a browser, run in your Chrome device. And then uh, we call it the, the Google Web Store. These are extensions that you can load into your Chrome device, but I, I was talking to a gentleman earlier. I mean, name every kind of, you know, um, remote conferencing system, whether it's Zoom or WebEx or Google Hangouts, they all natively work in Chrome. You don't need to deploy software. You all push it through a cloud console. Uh, Chrome devices also can run Android applications. So if someone earlier was asking me about Microsoft Office, you can actually run Microsoft Office if you're a 365 customer. It'll click to run stuff in the applications as well on Chrome devices. So um, a lot of folks will say, oh, I can't really run my applications. You can. Um, and, and again, I, I'd say another popular use case that we're going to go into a little bit later is also Chrome devices can run uh, virtual applications. So whether it's Citrix, VMware, uh, Frame, uh, you know, a lot of these uh, virtualized uh, streaming type of applications also can run on your Chrome device as well. So let's talk a little bit about the Chrome Enterprise license. So, and this is where I think most folks, they've heard of Chromebooks, or they've heard of, or they've heard of this, their, their kids are using it in school, they may have seen it in an electronics store, um, but then they kinda, it's hard to translate, well how do I do this in the enterprise? And so the way you do this is through the Chrome Enterprise Management License. I, I'd say the easiest way to compare it to Apple's is like an MDM license. So you take the device out of the box, it gets enrolled into your Google Administrative Console, and from there, you essentially can affect over 200 user policies, device policies, and they're all pushed from the cloud down to your device. So whether they're on-prem, off-prem, on LTE, not connected, on the other side of the world, you as an administrator have full control of the devices, pushing the applications, the policies, and all those things without having the traditional, um, 
I would say, agent-based and, and drain that you have to be on a corporate network to get your license provisioned. Um, and again, uh, with the Chrome Enterprise Management License, you have the, the support of Google and 24 by 7 support. So let's talk about, and this is my favorite, because uh, as an IT admin, I don't know how many golden images I have built for companies. I would hope that they're still not in use at the companies where I've been, but they might be. Um, and so from, from left to right, I think we'll, we'll start with Windows, because I think most of us have feel that pain in our organization, whether it's our help desk staff or the users, you know, ourselves waiting to get a PC laptop. So I, I think these numbers were pulled from Gartner, but the average uh, time spent provisioning a PC is over, I think it's two and a half hours there. Um, and I would even say maybe that's low, because then what about the disk encryption? Because that's like a whole other thing you wait after the device is spin up. Um, Mac, same thing, about two and a half hours. And a Chrome device is like 30 minutes. I would say it's even, it could be even less than that. Um, it's really just the beauty and simplicity of really being able to, to deploy a fleet quickly and seamlessly. I think a lot of the benefits are, is no matter what device you pick, the one that I have here, I happen to have an Acer, or you have a Google Pixelbook, or any of the devices out here, the OS is manufactured by Google. You cannot tamper with it as, a, as an organization, and you, that's it. So you're out of the golden <coughs> image business of building golden custom images. <coughs> You essentially will go into the Google Admin Console, change those policies, and as soon as the device is enrolled into your organization, it gets all those settings and configurations that you configured from a console. So um, I'd say that is the beauty of it. And then finally, um, we kind of also have support tickets here. So from the right side, we have you know an average, this is per 1,000 devices. The average is about 95 support tickets. Mac is about 53. Linux is about uh, 33 support tickets out of 1,000. You can see Chrome OS is about 19. I, I just like to say it's, it's simple. Um, when I talk to administrators, folks new to it, it's just a simpler way of thinking. Um, a lot of the Microsoft, the ways we've been taught as organizations and third-party software providers that, that help manage Microsoft have almost ingrained these things to us that we have to work this way. But with Chrome Enterprise, you don't. So again, uh, I, I think the, the user experience is really what makes Chrome Enterprise a great OS to be on. Um, so again, they, they securely are accessing their device that is encrypted out of the, out of the box. They have a cloud profile. Um, and you can essentially put these, we call it ephemeral mode, where the device is essentially wiped the user profile all the time. I'd say this is a very popular um, regulated industries, healthcare, financial, fintech, you know, where, hey, we're going to do something on the device. And as soon as I'm done with it, I essentially want you know, to wipe it. I think sometimes we'll do this in virtualized environments, but you can actually do this on a Chromebook. So you don't have to worry about Oh, is there a company data on it? Is there user data? As soon as the device is signed out, all the data is gone. Um, I think we also worry about that folks downloading things. What do they download and put on their downloads folder? You put your Chrome devices in a mode so they're, all that data is gone as soon as they've signed out of the device. Um, and again, I, I talked about a number of use cases on how you can configure Chrome devices. So one is signing in. So my Chromebook, I'm signed in as my own account. Another mode we have is what's called Managed Guest Session, which I think is very popular, especially I'd say uh, in Citrix and VDI use cases, no logins required. They enter the session, and then from there, they'll log into Citrix or other applications. So you don't have to get into management. Good question. Yes. So, what happens when um, the organization where there is no one, <coughs> since you can't download anything locally? Yeah. So, there are certain applications that do run offline. So, um, depending on the need, so I'll use a popular example email, right? I'm a person, I travel a lot, and I want to get on an airplane. Gmail has an offline capability, as well as some of the Office applications have offline capabilities as well. So, again, if you're connected to a cloud application that has to be online, like a, like a SaaS application, yeah, you, you, you're going to have limited connectivity there. But a lot of the applications you can post through Android or the web store, a lot of them do have offline capabilities as well. In fact, that's how I work when I'm on an airplane. I usually will have my email loaded. You know, we all do a couple emails, and when you get off, you know, they send out your email. So. Usually Citrix doesn't work offline. <laughs> but uh, a, lot, a lot of other applications, I think, for that remote worker use case for email, calendars, stuff of that nature, do work offline. And then finally, I think the, the beauty of this, and, and we're going to cover it, I think, in a, in a later slide, is the ability with Chrome Sync or, or uh, Sync profiles that uh, whether I'm on this device or I go pick up one of the devices out there or I forgot my device at home, I just sign into another device and I'm back where I left off. Right? And traditional PC, as we all know, if I don't have my PC, I'm kind of done for the day. Um, so 
just some high numbers here. I know I only got a couple minutes, so I don't want to take too long. Um, so Schnucks is a, is a customer of ours, and they estimate they're saving approximately 1200 bucks per computer. Um, and I think as an organization, you have to do the math, because they'll look and say, well, the hardware, it's a little cheaper, and this and that, and you have to buy the management license. You have to think about all the third-party software that we have loaded on our Windows devices at this point. You know, $50, $100 agents on every single machine. We don't even really know if they're really protecting us or making us any more secure. If anything, that we know they make our computers slower. <laughs> Um, so uh, I'd say that's a, 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 an advantage. And so again, Schnucks in their environment, they're about a 50,000 uh, employee company and about 15,000 or so are using shared devices. Um, so again, I talk about a use case, right? You may not be able to go and replace your entire workforce with Chrome, but you start you know, chunking it at organizational groups and use cases that really can go Chrome and improve their, uh, and improve their, their data. So, uh, and I'll, I'll just mention this quickly. Any G Suite customers in here? Anyone use Google for their email providers? Okay, a couple. I see a couple. So, I mean, honestly, for you folks, it's 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 almost seamless because you already have a Google identity. You sign in with your corporate identity, and you're consuming Calendar and Gmail and apps and all the things you're used to doing. Um, usually, folks who have already kind of made journeys like that, um, I'd say, are more well positioned or even in a better position to to really push for their frontline workers with with Chromebooks and, and things of that nature. So let me keep it moving here. And so the last thing I'll mention before I go into a couple of use cases is the grab and go. So this is, yes? Without moderation, and uh, it acts, uh, for example, I uh, can add services, yep. and we use Windows and we have various software that will monitor what emails are being sent, if they contain email addresses, phone numbers, social security numbers. Yep. Uh, what kind of tools are available? Yeah, so uh, out of the box, uh, Google Chrome Enterprise doesn't provide any BLP products, but we do integrate with a lot of the popular ones out in the market. You know, Blue Code, Semantic, other CASB solutions as well. Do you have a Semantic here? Semantic actually, for a while when they purchased, before Semantic purchased Blue Code, Blue Code actually had a lot of products in the Chrome world. And then when they were purchased by Semantic, they kind of got pulled out, but they're actually all coming back in right now. So um, I think they just actually, maybe about a month ago, they, they released some new extensions. It's kind of under their CASB line. Um, is how semantics marketing it, but it is BLP, proxy, and a lot of those those features. And, and uh, the gentleman was asking about other network protections. We do integrate with proxy solutions and a lot of these other network-based um, controls that you may want to implement as an enterprise. So the grab and go, this is something Google's been doing forever, um, but this has really been taking off with businesses. Essentially, it's a rack of, of Chromebooks. Forget your laptop, your laptop's being repaired, whatever it might be, and you're able to just pick up a Chromebook, sign into it, get it for a week, and, and you just consume it. Um, it's very popular at Google. Folks will leave their laptops and they'll just go travel to another office, and they just pick up their laptop there, use it for the few days they're there, and return it. So it's a very, very popular uh, use case that we're seeing, especially sometimes, too, when they're new to Chrome. It's, it's, it's like a way to introduce it to the business and the organization. So let me go to a couple of uh, use cases here. So um, it, like I mentioned, uh, we talk about use cases. So. Um, training and development, I think, comes up very often with a lot of companies. Um, and so uh, this, this is for Panda Express, and they're using uh, Chrome devices in the back of the house um, for associates and managers, uh, associated managers to access uh, corporate communications, productivity, time cards, inventory. This is a very similar use case to the large retailer that I work for as well. And again, they're cloud managed, so you don't need to worry about connectivity and a lot of the things that we worry about, I think, in these remote locations, right, as long as there's consumer-based internet. This is a manufacturing and packaging. Um, this is Sanmina. I've actually gotten to work with them. They produce um, ICU units um, that are used within um, uh, healthcare facilities and hospitals, um, and essentially electronics for, for, for medical care. Um, and they had a terrible time when things would come in from RMAs and replacements. So they've deployed, and these are chrome bases that I was talking about, out in their, um, in their warehouse floors. And that's how their associates access uh, to pick and pieces and parts and all those things. So uh, Makita Libre, they are a company that operates online marketplaces um, for, for various, uh, essentially like they white label um, marketplaces for other retailers. And so they're using Chrome OS devices and this is with another partnership we have called Neverware. And Neverware, essentially you can take, it's Chrome <coughs> OS that you can put on existing PCs. So say you have a fleet of, I'll use the call center use case, 
a call center with traditional PCs and you want to make them Chrome devices, Everware is a company that essentially takes our Google, our Google OS image and allows you to put it on a PC. So you can essentially reutilize your existing hardware investment. So Charles Schwab, um, this one's actually, if you guys Google this, Google Chrome Enterprise and Charles Schwab, this is, a, um, uh, this is out uh, publicly. But they've used it to essentially in their, in their retail branches for educating uh, potential clients. Um, and they, they really have a, have a great use case as well. Um, and it's really just accessing a lot of their, their consumer platforms that their, their associates are using to help uh, other customers right, understand it and access it as well. Um, Irva, they're a commercial semi-state company, so they make like uh, integrated chips and, and things on, on circuit cards, and they work uh, natural gas, fiber, a lot of utility providers. Um, so what's really interesting about them, and kind of an example we saw inside the, uh, the video, is the remote workers, it's a Citrix VDI use case, so they have LT-enabled devices, they connect to their Citrix environments, and then they're essentially working with those, let's say, traditional legacy applications within their Chromebooks as well. So we have, um, so th this story is about Middlesex Hospital, and I, I'd say healthcare is a, a growing industry we're seeing in Chrome Enterprise. There are also a lot of, lot of healthcare organizations do use Citrix or VDI. But uh, same thing, these are for remote healthcare workers that go out um, to patient sites or visit uh, rehab facilities, and so they're LT-enabled or hotspot-enabled devices, and then they access their reporting utilities and patient reporting. That's about, uh, we have a video, but I'll skip it because I'm kind of getting booted. Um, and if you guys want to learn more, if you just Google Chrome Enterprise and Hotline Worker, you can read about a lot of these use cases as well. What would you say the percentage of Google employees who use Chromebooks and Hotline OS? It has been growing even more. I think it's actually at over 50% now. So we, you can also run a Linux container <coughs> within Chrome devices. So we now have developers using uh, uh, Chrome OS. So, but at Google, we are agnostic. You can pick a, a, a Chromebook, a PC, or a Mac. More and more groups as they're forming and coming into organizations, or coming into Google, they're essentially handed a Chromebook as their first device, and then they'll, they'll be opted or told to go, why can't you use the Chrome device? Um, and it's actually a great use case kind of too for, for companies, hey, give them, give them new employees or the new group a Chrome device. I'd say more and more is like your own peers are using it, then everyone around and you and your group start using it. I asked because of the capabilities, because years ago it really wasn't, it was a great thing if I had a meeting on the road, I knew that we wanted to be great. It wasn't really enough tools to do everything I needed to do. Yep. So I'm wondering how much progress has been made in the last year. Yeah, I, again, I think for our frontline workers, a lot of the, the use cases we're talking about here, it's there. Um, you know, I always go back to engineers and certain folks, you know, a lot of it, you know, if they're stuck on a PC because of applications, I'll pick on CAD right. or, you know, Visual, but in fact, you can run Visual Studio Code in Linux now. So, in fact, I have it on my other Chromebook. So, um, but there are certain applications that are more PC, right? But again, that's maybe not an area to focus, right? The area to focus on frontline workers and, and some of the use cases we, we talked about first. So. Yes, we do have remote desktop services and, and clients and things, right? Any links or strategies on how to do change management beyond the frontline workers? So you do have a lot of legacy people who are PC-based. Yep. And getting them switched over into the Chrome Enterprise. Any suggestions on that? Yeah, we, we um, actually internally have a group that does deployment services for customers that are starting to deploy Chrome. Um, but we also work with a lot of number of partners um, that you may actually already have in your organization that you purchase your PCs from or, or get other PC services that sometimes are actually a better fit um, because they can actually sit and know more of your environment. Your change management tools, management processes, and things of that nature, communication. 